Hello everyone, in this video we're going to enable HTTPS for our Spring Boot application using SSL bundles from Spring Boot version 3.1. We are also testing the SSL hot reload features from Spring Boot version 3.2 that listen to the change of those SSL files to rotate the certificate as well. So obviously we need Spring Boot version 3.2 or above to go through this video. Besides that, we are going to use Base64 encoded PAM files rather than Java key stores. GCAS files. Since GCAS is only well known in Java world, and there are lots of tutorials out there about it. To sum up, we need OpenSSL to generate these PAM encoded cell site certificates. We won't talk about installing OpenSSL here. I believe you guys can install it by yourself. Let's start by going to start.spring.io. So we are going with Spring Boot version 3.2.4. So I will name it SSL HTTPS demo jar. Java 21. For the sake of this demo, we only need Spring Web at the dependencies. Okay, so basically what we're going to have is our build radio with only one dependency, the Spring Boot Starter Web. And we need to add a Hello Controller for testing purpose. The, so this Hello method is the API that we are going to test. Guess la Hello. And the last thing we have to do is renamed the application of properties to application of YAML. So with that being said, let's go ahead and follow the readme file we put here. First, we need to create a pair of private keys and the safety gate by using OpenSSL request functionalities. So this new key RSA here is to create a private key first using the RSA algorithm. This minus x509 it generate a cell site certificate and the sha256 is the hard function to create a signature of the certificate uh, we have days the validity period of the certificate so it's usually one year a common name fields in the subject of the certificate and minus nost means we don't want to encrypt the private key with any passphrase and our outputs it includes two files the first one is the server keys is the output private key and the second one is the server.crt is the output certificate files. So if you take a look at the unencrypted private key, so our server key with the minus not here, it will look like this, begin private key. So it's different from uh, the encrypted private key so with encrypted private key you will see here encrypted private key so this time we react with minus not so that's why we only see begin private key okay let's check it here okay so we now have the subdicate server of CRT and the private keys begin private keys and private keys Okay, let. So the next one, we're going to move our private key and the subdicate to a folder. So let's say it's a folder here. I'm going to create new folder directory, server, and in server, we're going to write a start folder. Hmm. Search. And we'll move them from here to start. Okay. So we have server search, server of CRT, server of key. And the next step we want to do is we configure SSL for these files using the old mechanism server of SSL. You might want to take a look here. Okay, so configure SSL, then if we want to use a perm encoded files, so this is the base 64 perm files. So we can have the server of SSL of certificate and server of SSL certificate private key. So this is our certificate and this is the private key uh, come along with that certificate and the port is any one that you want. Okay, then so we have the same server SSL certificate and we point to server of cert server 
no CRT and for private key the same here so we use at the moment we are using a uh, relative part but you can use class part for example if you push this uh, certificate in the result so it should be in class part something like that okay let's copy it first and then paste it here so if you put it in the class part you can point to this file by class part for example right okay and you can also use the absolute part here I would like to use the relative part uh, and that's it let's back to our readme okay then we run the application so we will see that the connector here the TSL virtual hot and we'll see Tomcat started on port A443 and then okay so let's try to send a request to our hello controller hello method here to see if it will return hello world okay let's print it so we see that okay we're running and we see that the server we will notice that the service certificate and we have the objects the subjects here the common name is what we already passed here right so we have the subject and the common name here cell site no entry key cert and we have the response as well hello world okay that's good so far this time let's create encrypted private key with a passphrase for example one two three four five six then by running this command so basically the same but the command that we have run but uh, is that we don't specify minus nodes here and we specify to minus pass out and then we pass the pass is one two three four five six here to create the encrypted private key first so we also change the common name from cell site no encrypt to cell site search one to distinguish so we are successfully setting a new certificate okay let's run it then we're going to have it should okay here then let's uh what's we're going to do next meet okay so we will see that the new key should have the encrypt private key okay and we're going to override the to uh, the search here okay let override 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 then so we run the applications so we restart the applications and with that we're going to get the exception set that the password is required for encrypted private key so for my limit knowledge so i couldn't find any configuration properties that can be used to pass this passphrase using the old support of ssl so password none of them is our private keys password private keys passphrase right then let's go to the new ssl bundles from Swing Boot version 3.1 Okay, so Spring Boot introduced a new way to support SSL by SSL bundle. So as you can see here, let's throw it down a little bit. So basically, this is the old one and this is the new one. They are functionalities the same and then so that's what we're going to use. Okay, so basically we have string dot ssl dot bundles dot gks for gks store and dot bundle dot pem for pem files and this is the name of the bundle and we have some information of the bundle here and then at last in the server dot ssl we only need to specify the bundle name so for example here is web server 
Okay, let's back to our applications. So we are using SSL, Spring SSL bundle for PAM. And we'll name this bundle server, right? And in this server bundle, we are declare some configuration properties for our key store. So we have certificate, the private key, and the private key password. This is our passphrase in OpenSSL. And then, so we're going, going to use so we are going to use the server of SSL, but this time without using SSL of certificate and SSL of certificate private keys, we use SSL bundle and we point to the server bundle here. Okay, let's copy it and go to application of YAML, paste it here. So you see case SSL bundle. So this is our old way, right? So we server SSL certificate. But now we only need to server SSL bundle and we point to this server bundle. That's it. Okay. Let's restart our application. Okay, it's run successfully with the encrypted private key with a passphrase. And then let's try to send a request again. So it's successfully, hello world. And we can see our new certificate here, cell site search one. Okay, so cell search one. Then let's move to the next section about the SSL hot reloads from Spring Boot 3.2. So in 3.2, introduce a new feature named reload on update so that we don't have to restart our application, our service. Instead, we only need to change the files here and then the changes will be detected by Spring and reload automatically, okay? So we need to add reload under the server, server bundles. server so we have key tor and we have reload key store reload okay pam server reload okay then let's restart restart again so now we applied the new functionalities okay let's run and so we see at the same as before, we have the subjects. It the common name. The common name is cell site search one, right? Okay, then let's generate the new pair of private key and certificate. The same name, right? Because we have to keep the same name: the server keys, server of CRTs, and we have to have the same passphrase as well. So one, two, three, four, five, six. But this time, let's uh, have the different common name. So we are going to create a common name for this time is cell site cert two, and we keep all the other attribute the same: server key, server CRTs, and the past. Okay, let's run it. Okay, so we are going to have two new certificate and private key here. Okay, then they're the same name, right? Same name, same passphrase, then let's override. Oh, before that, let's check our lock. So it should, okay. Override, override. Then we successfully override two files to our location here. Okay, then we see that we are relaxed successfully with the new certificate. Then let's send let's send a request again. Then we receive yes yeah, still hello world but this time you see the subjects is now cell size two. 
It means that this is our new certificate, not the old one. Okay, let's send some requests on the browser. So, HTTP localhost, for example, 8443, hello. Okay, so we are going to get a bus request because we are sending HTTP, right? Then HTTPS. Then your connect is not private. Okay, I understand uh, because it's a cell site certificate. So proceed. And then we're going to get the hello world. Okay, that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you so much for taking your time watching this video and this series. Hope you can learn something new here and see you in the next video. Happy coding!